Goldman Sachs out this morning saying that a tapering announcement could happen as soon as November. So not at the conference, but maybe indications about what's going to happen. Anetta Markowska is with us now, Jeffrey's chief financial economist. And Anetta, in your note previewing the conference, you say no fireworks. So what do you think is, is happening on the taper front? Um, and do you think that how important do you think the timing is of when it begins? You know, whether it depends, whether it begins in November, December, I don't think that makes a big difference. I think most of it is already in the price. My base case is November. Um, so I would agree with uh, with that forecast you just cited this more, uh, uh, earlier. You know, the timing of this Jackson Hole conference is certainly interesting because while we've seen the progress on the labor market that I think the Fed wanted to see, we finally are, you know, averaging about 950,000 jobs per month, at least in the last two months. So the labor market certainly seems to be moving in the in the right direction, but we're obviously experiencing this temporary setback in terms of growth momentum, um, right on the back of all the July data that disappointed, and, and now obviously the Delta variant potentially uh, putting a dent in service activity here in August and, and possibly into September. But you know, so so I would say it makes it difficult for the Fed to signal anything and to commit to any uh, particular taper taper timeline at this point. But I think they do have to acknowledge that we have made further progress on those taper goals. And by the way, growth momentum is not part of the taper test, so it's just really more about the optics. Um, and, and the uncertainty that we're facing. I think it's a very kind of short-term pocket of uncertainty. And, you know, things will feel very differently probably by, by October and certainly by November if the Delta um, uh, peak is behind us. And, you know, Netta, I, I, I guess we'll, we'll have this conversation through this week, but I do wonder if, um, the you know, speaking of the optics, the optics of having to make the conference virtual sort of um, puts into starker relief of a sort um, where we're at in the recovery. And, and if maybe there were plans, and I, I don't... I don't really think Jay Powell is the kind of guy who's going to change his plans for this sort of a speech overnight. But if there were plans to signal an earlier taper, it certainly gets more difficult when you've just had to um, kind of bring the conference back to a 2020 type setting, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he's been writing this speech for weeks now, so I doubt uh, that it, you know, underwent any major revisions because of the conference going uh, remotely. Um, I mean, just think about last year, they were in the fully remote setting and they were able to communicate a, a framework change. So I don't think it's a massive deal, you know, but, but you're right. The optics are, are certainly um, a, a little bit tricky. I think this is just re this is just kind of symptomatic of uh, what we're seeing in the business community more broadly. A lot of conferences getting canceled. That's obviously going to, again, put a dent in, in, um, in service activity in terms of flights and hotels. So I think that's that's um, uh, that's certainly, you know, very true. I, I do want to highlight, though, that, you know, that, that, that it's the duration of this uncertainty that's that's really we should be questioning. Right. Because um, if the CDC projections are correct and if, in fact, we are pretty much close to peaking in terms of Delta cases in the south and if they peak in the northeast, say, four or five weeks from now, you know, those optics can change very, very quickly. Um, and I think by the November FOMC meeting, you know, it, the, the narrative out there and, 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 and sort of the, the confidence about the recovery, the continued recovery will, will be, will be uh, much stronger. So absolutely, optics are difficult. It's a setback. But, but I think, it, you know, the, the chances are that it will be relatively short lived. How severe is this growth slowdown, Anita? I was just reading your note this morning, and, and you, you show a lot of interesting charts on restaurant bookings. Those have been under pressure uh, in recent weeks. Hotel rates, hotel bookings also under pressure. Just in terms of, I guess, GDP this quarter, what are you looking for? Yeah, so we're I, right now, I think it's sort of realistic to look for roughly 3% growth, 3 to 4% range. That's certainly down from, you know, where we were tracking or sort of what we were assuming going into the quarter, which was closer to 6 to 7%. So again, definitely a loss of momentum. Um, I would say what we've seen in monthly data and even in real-time data that you showed there um, is basically a stall in activity. We're certainly not contracting. It, it's really just kind of a stall driven by uh, certain sectors, those that are obviously more sensitive to the Delta variant. And even there, it's been very localized. So really, the bulk of the drug has, has so far come, you know, from the South. Um, so again, I would characterize it as, as um, you know, a loss of momentum. We're certainly not contracting. 
Um, and, and I do still think that, you know, there's a good chance we get a lot of it back in the fourth quarter and in early 2022. I mean, the fundamentals really have not changed. We're still looking at the, the, the healthiest household balance sheets in decades, lowest inventories, pretty much on record, um, CapEx intentions very, very strong. So none of that has changed. Um, again, this is really just another delay um, uh, in this recovery cycle that I think still has pretty long legs. So, Anetta, let's assume that this is happening, right, that we're having a delay of that resumption of, of growth or hotter growth. Let's assume the Fed does announce a taper, whether it's November, December, whenever it is. Um, given all that, will there be another so-called taper tantrum, do you think, in the markets? I really doubt it. I mean, what's so different this time from 2013 that, you know, 2013, the Fed really just dropped the bomb and, and they went from not even talking about talking about taper to saying, hey, we're, we're going to taper here pretty soon. Obviously, very, very different communication strategy this time around. And even, you know, and, and even sort of from a few months ago, all the way up to the, the actual taper announcement, I think they're going to communicate it very incrementally. They added this language in the statement in July, you know, sort of acknowledging we've made progress. I think the next iteration will sort of be upgrading that to further progress and then eventually to substantial further progress. So by 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 sort of, you know, communicating it in such an incremental fashion, I, I think they've taken pretty much all of the surprise element out of it. So, um, you know, everybody knows they're going to taper. The only debate is, you know, is it November, December, or maybe January? Again, I don't think that makes um, makes a huge uh, difference in terms of, you know, where the rates market's trading. I think the significance of the taper announcement to me is that it really kind of gets that out of the way and allows the market to focus on uh, the next step, which is the timing of liftoff. And more, more importantly, what actually happens post liftoff and, and just how quickly do they tighten from there on? Because that's, I, I think, where the curve is most, you know, quote unquote, mispriced at the moment.